there's been another partial condo collapse of a high-rise condominium in New Jersey where construction workers were performing concrete repairs on the eighth floor cantilever slab balcony of this condo when it crashed down onto the seventh floor patio right below it. Now, I first alerted you to this collapse back on February 26th and promised you a video, so here it is. All right, so we wanna take a look at some of these pictures and photos that we have from the scene. Some of it's looking up from underneath. And also we wanna look at some of the helicopter video that's looking down on it from above as well. And we wanna take a look at these photos and video and see what sort of sense we can make out of this. And I think we have a potential root cause here that we can investigate and come up with a pretty good idea for what we think caused this patio slab to collapse, killing one of the construction workers. So our investigation takes us all the way up to the Jersey Shore to the little town of Sea Isle City, New Jersey and the 3700 block of Pleasant Avenue of all names for a street at a time like this. So this is the Spinnaker tower condominium it was built in 1972 along the jersey shore it's a nine story condo and these are pictures of it when it was under construction and here is what it looks like today let's take a look at the google street view because i want to show you a couple of things here so these are the two buildings it happened right here on this edge the northern edge of the south tower and man doesn't this just sort of have like tragic connection to the champlain tower south condo collapse that i've sh been showing you over the last two years down in the surfside suburb of miami beach where we showed that condo collapse and it too was the south tower i want to show you some stuff here on the building that i saw here i did not really like this is the uh, elevated pool deck right here the pool is on the second floor and you can see just a lot of cracks in the concrete block wall there i don't believe that's a support structure i think that's just more like a parapet type wall it is the wall for the pool area cracks here in the concrete so the building appeared to have a lot of problems and this looks like another crack right here on and that's a corner and that's probably a column in the corner they're not sure and you see some of these as well over here here's where the collapse occurred so it was on this unit right here the eighth floor balcony and this balcony came crashing down on to the seventh floor balcony now what happened was there was a crew of three construction workers that were working and there you can see is they were coming down the the lift one of the construction workers was here standing on the seventh floor and the other two were on the eighth floor doing something when it broke and slid down and landed on top of the one here and when it came down and landed on top of this patio and it killed the construction worker and unfortunately he was the brother of one of the other workers there i'm a little concerned about as i look up and look under the underneath side of some of these patios here's the third floor cantilever slab patio and you can see these rust spots right here that seem to be forming in the middle of nowhere on the field of the patio slab and then possibly another one up here on this floor and let me see if any of the other floors have them no i don't see them but this gives me concern because this almost says that hey the reinforcement rods that come out of the building that are inside the slab have gotten rusty and maybe spalling is starting to occur and so the water is now dripping out of there like a sponge and causing these rusty spots you start to get concrete spalling and the chipping and stuff like that that could be what they saw now here's something else that i i thought was a little odd about these two buildings so look at the north tower when you look at the the skin of the building there this was a, a common concrete pattern back in the 1970s to do this so this building has it the south building does not have it it looks like they've already either sanded it off or maybe it wasn't built with it the fire department gave us a small handful of pictures here that we can analyze too that they took this from inside the unit of the seventh floor slab where the patio fell down on top of it so here's the upper floor the eighth floor patio slab this is interesting here so i don't know if the fire department painted this or if the construction crew painted this to indicate that crack there but anyway if you look here right in front of the door and i guess this unit was already vacant anyway because it looks like there's some other kind of damage in here now these are hairline cracks and these could have been caused by the collapse so we don't even know what i'm looking at right here this is an sds rotary hammer chipping bit or think of it as a jackhammer bit and this is used to chip up the concrete so they were definitely doing some type of chipping there and here you can see this was up against the wall as the cantilever upstairs on the eighth floor above it you can see how it just pretty much sheared off straight down but you can see here a lot of the upper rebars on this slab are exposed here which is puzzling you know here's the other picture they released and this right here i don't know if that's a walkie talkie or some other meter that they were using this gives another clue as to what's going on here now right here 
I'm seeing two machines. Both of these look to be cutoff saws to me. This one in the background, this looks to me like a Milwaukee cutoff tool, you know, for concrete. And this one, I believe, is a Husqvarna. But look what they did here. It looks to me like somewhere they were cutting in the middle of the slab. They had already cut this down and roughened this up, but they cut a wide channel here going down the middle of the slab exposing all of these rebars right here and they made a right turn right here with that same channel so it's like they dug down probably looks like to be like two or three inches down into the concrete exposing all these rebars and but what's got me concerned is it appears like they sheared them why would you shear this one and shear that one right there gonna get really grainy but you can see that it, it looks like they cut right through these upper rebars after grinding down to their level to expose them all. So the other thing we're wondering here is did they use the iCry methods? And that's what this is. This is the International Concrete Repair Institute. Now this is an old uh, guide here and they have many guides but this one here in particular shows you know the guide for surface preparation for the repair of deteriorated concrete now when you look at it so this almost looks like what they did on the top of that slab you see they cut this kind of a channel out of it there to expose the rebar now what they were doing that for i don't know but in typical concrete this is what you have in your full depth slab so you will have an upper set of rebar rods and you'll have a lower set and they're usually embedded on i don't know a couple of inches into the concrete from the top and from the bottom so why they would channel down to this and expose this unless they were making some sort of repair. But then if you look at the photo here, why would they cut all the way across this entire slab when it doesn't appear that uh, there's really even much damage that I can see. I don't even see any spalling going on here. Any type of rusting of it that would have caused any need to dig down this deep into this slab. And then even if you did dig down this deep, why would you cut all the way across every one of your rebar members there? I mean, that to me just doesn't make any sense. So as we look closer at this other photograph, again, on the other side of the patio here, here's another crack. So here's the seventh floor slab is already cracked. It looks like it's just compromised. And then here's the eighth floor slab. Where do you see any damage here that it needed to be chiseled all the way down to expose these? And here's the ones that are cut. You see that? Now, what I don't know is, I don't know if these are new rebars that were cut and put in here as a repair, or if they just simply exposed the old ones and sliced all the way through it. So that's the mystery. Now, if I'm right, and these are the old ones, and they just sliced and sheared right through these, what's going to support your deck now? The whole thing's going to just come crashing down by way of delamination. And it looks like right here, see how this one ends? This is why I think this was the old ones. This rebar rod was cut here, and it ends right here. And the line for it, you can see, goes right here, all the way to the wall. Same here, this line goes all the way to the wall. So I think that this could be a case of gross human error. I think they may have caused their own demise in this one. Yeah, this shows the lift that these guys were coming down from the roof on. If you look here, see how it sheared away? Probably about, looks to be about, I don't know, six inches to a foot away from the wall. But look at all of these rebars. Look how most of them are cut pretty much around the same length, like they were sheared off. And you can tell that these rebars that are sticking out straight do not go the full length of the cantilever. As you can see, it goes, it looks like about half. It appears to be that's where they did that cutting there in the middle of the slab, right? My theory here is that they were cutting through all of these and they finally got to the point where the thing was just dangling on its own and it just delaminated and boom the weight just sheared right off because these guys just pulled right out of the top of the concrete. Remember, it's only buried inside this deck up to about an inch or so. And you can see where they were doing all sorts of grinding on the walls here. They were probably getting ready to do the, the remaining of the concrete repairs and painting. So I'm also wondering why they did not install any shoring poles to bolster up the balconies first, like they did here. If you remember my video from last year, I showed you from the Champlain Towers North condo where they had already started doing that. And that's typical for most buildings buildings doing any kind of restoration work. So naturally, I'm wondering why they didn't install any of the shore poles here at the Spinnaker Tower Condominium in New Jersey. For example, even the American Concrete Institute has these specifications for repairing of concrete in buildings. For example, here in Section 2 under Shoring and Bracing, they're already covering here how to install and how to remove the shoring and the bracing. It says here to support the structure before, during, and after the performance of repairs until the structure or members of the structure are self-supporting 
and accepted by the architect or engineer uh, to employ a specialty engineer to design all of the shoring and bracing that shall address pre-existing unsafe structural conditions. Not only is it logical, but all of the concrete repair specifications and manuals are telling you to add whole shores to your building before you start the work. And then down here in section 2.2, this is interesting too. It says, unless otherwise specified, use commercially manufactured and engineered shoring and bracing systems and components, which usually means use the metal poles. And then calculations shall be signed and sealed by a specialty engineer. So you can see just how important this is, folks, that even the standards bodies and the real engineers know that it's the safest bet to put shoring up before you do any type of work like this, because there is always this risk. And I believe had they put that shoring up in place there beforehand, this collapse never would have even happened. They did come in after the fact and add some of these wooden shore poles, but I question if these are strong enough and was this done under the guidance of an engineer. But it all just seems like it was a little bit too little and too late. This should have been done beforehand. And a lot of times these engineering failures can be caused by your low man on the totem pole who may not understand the science and engineering and physics and the dangers behind what he's about to do. There's another example, you're getting a bonus collapse here. So this is that Bayshore parking garage that collapsed last month. And you can see all of that snow that just came right down there along with probably some of the wall and concrete from above. But what caused this one? So security cameras up on the roof of the garage had captured the guys in the snow plow here making these giant piles of snow. And anybody that lives up north, man, you know you just can't do that, folks. Channel 12 did some investigation and discovered that there was no snow shoots up on the top. Meanwhile, you can find the snow shoots in other locations around there. And then right over here is where it would dump into the trucks. Now the city released the floor plans of this Bayshore parking garage onto the internet for us. So I grabbed this. So here's the top of the garage. And right here, sort of in the lower middle of the screen, I believe that's where it showed the bulldozers piling up the snow there where it collapsed. But yet the plans over here in the upper right, you see way here where the arrow is pointing, that's where the snow chute is supposed to be. See that right there? So this right here is where the snow chute is supposed to be. And apparently there isn't one. Had there been a snow chute, they could have just dumped the snow right in here and it would have gone straight down to the ground instead of piling up here on the roof and causing too much weight to be distributed here in this small area. Now, if you look right here, you'll see the video that I uploaded last month on the Royal Rivers apartments that are getting ready to collapse and why these apartments have not been evacuated by now is just beyond me. There's so much damage on them. So be sure to check that video out. And thanks for joining us today, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.